You are listening to the Bright Life Podcast, all about ways to stay inspired, chase your dreams, and find more gratitude in the highs and lows of the journey. I'm your host, Jessica Johnson. I'm a business owner, a part-time digital nomad, a self-growth junkie, a believer in other big-hearted women, and am all about sharing tips, tricks, lessons learned, and encouragement so we can all live our biggest, brightest lives. You ready? Let's do this. Hi, everyone. I thought it would be fun today to share the fears that I had before leaving corporate America. Because if you're in any way in the same spot, maybe you're thinking about leaving, starting your own career, own business, I know that there are so many things that can play into your mindset, your headspace, your fears when you're thinking of doing that. Um, It basically goes against every feeling of security that you have been led to have at this point. And so just taking a stand and wanting to dream for something different or go for something different, to believe in yourself enough to go for it and to believe that things can work out, it really runs you up against a lot of your um, doubts, your limiting beliefs, any blocks that you have. And so I wanted to just share and normalize the fact that that's normal, like that I don't know if people talk about this very much on the internet, but that it's really normal to be really afraid before you go take a leap in your life. And, you know, I had these fears um, before leaving corporate America, uh, before starting my podcast. I think that's when like your brain just spins up all the crazy thoughts that you haven't noticed because you've never pushed yourself to pay attention to them. You've never been at the limits where um, you've been so uncomfortable that you have to then assess them and see what's there that you kind of don't even notice that they're in there until you're ready to do something different. And then your brain puts out every effort it has to protect you, to keep you safe, to um, not, you know, force you out of your comfort zone and into the unknown because it just doesn't know what's there. So I want to just normalize that and hopefully give some encouragement to anyone else out there who's like, I have this dream, I really am ready to leave my current reality, my current day with work and do something different, but I'm scared to death to do it, (laughs) okay? So here's my very real, honest, vulnerable fears. (laughs) So the first one that I had was I would go broke. (laughs) I was very, very concerned about this. I saved up a pretty substantial savings before I left. Um, corporate America, you know, a few tens of thousands of dollars at least. And I just thought, okay, like I have that. And the second that that runs out, like that's it. I've done my experiment. I'm good. Um, And I did not even really have the fear of what would come after that, which is I would go into tens of thousands of dollars of more business debt um, because I was so invested at that point trying to make it work. I just had to find a way. I was years in. I really wanted it. And so, I mean, I, I did kind of go broke. I mean, I did run through like my savings. I went into more business debt. Um, but at the same time, like I was able to get out of that pretty quickly. Like once I did find what worked and you know, for me, it's a whole nother story, but that was freelance copywriting. And within a few months I paid off all that debt. I had replenished my savings, like, you know, over and over again. And so, um, that but that was a real fear for me and i think for me i kind of felt like i am gonna go like i'll have to you know like not not be able to pay my rent like i won't be able to buy food i don't know what i thought i mean i think i just was like so scared that i would not find a way to financially make it work and um in hindsight i would just say that there's such a like gap between working and not working. Like there's so many ways to make money um, along the way to support yourself and keep your dream alive. And for every client that you get, that propels you a little bit longer. For every piece of freelance work that you do, that propels you a little bit longer. Like in hindsight, what I would have told myself, um, I think I felt a lot of pressure to like only have my business be my income and only have it be the way that sustained me at all. And anything else, I felt like that was failing. What I would have told myself in hindsight is actually like you taking a side hustle 
is you building your dream. Like you finding a way to freelance to continue to build this business, like that is you finding a way to make it work. Like that is just as worthy as getting your first clients or you're selling your first products. Like you doing whatever it takes to keep that dream alive is just as worthy and just as valuable as you going out and having like your best sales day. And so I think that could have saved me a lot of, um, well, money, first of all, and just heartache. Like if I had known in hindsight, I think I would have almost split my day like that where you do the freelance work um, or your passion work, and then you get to go and do the opposite. And so that way I would know if I did my freelance work in the morning, I would have already made a few hundred dollars and then I could go and I could do you know, my, my passion project or my side hustle, whatever I was building. And you know, a few $400 like in the morning times five business days, I mean, that's 2000, that's an $8,000 a month. Um, and if it's, or 10,000, if it's a five week month. And so that's about a hundred thousand dollar year right there. And so I think that that would have alleviated a lot of the time pressure that I put on myself if I would have just been like, freelance is part of this bigger picture. Freelance copywriting is going to help and sustain me as I build this other like coaching practice, which is what I did when I first left corporate America. Um, so that was my first one that I would go broke. And I wish I could tell you that it was <laughs> like a, a false fear, but it wasn't for me. Like it was kind of a real fear realized. Um, but there are ways to get out of it and there's ways to prevent it too. And that's what I just wish I would have like almost allowed myself to explore and even see in hindsight. Um, I didn't even really think of freelance copywriting as like a way to do that. I, I did it on the side here and there, but I didn't do it fully and I didn't go into it even part time where I could have really sustained my business. I kind of just picked it up, you know, when I the opportunity presented itself or when I, you know, felt like I really needed something. And so in hindsight, I really would have just made it so that that was part of the plan. Um, and it would have prevented me from tapping into savings. It would have prevented me from going into debt. It would have given me a hundred thousand dollar a year corporate like salary um, while I built whatever I wanted to, or it would have become my career to begin with. Like it is now, like that was kind of waiting for me there all along. It's just funny how your brain almost doesn't see the solution. It thinks it has to follow this other path because that's what other people are doing or that's what you see in front of you as soon as you open up your possibilities and you're like there's a million ways to replace my income to make money to find work that's meaningful sometimes that's when it appears so that was my first fear um sorry i feel like that one might not make you feel that <laughs> that much better but it should because there are ways is the point of that to always make money and if nothing else there's freelance copywriting where you can make 50, 75, hundred dollars an hour if you have the right strategy and positioning for yourself um, that you never have to worry about that fear of, of going broke. Like how amazing that you will always have financial security once you know how to get clients that you can always make uh, hundreds if not a thousand dollars a day through that. Like that is an amazing feeling. So that fear, um, it, it, it doesn't have to be there anymore. Like how amazing that you can alleviate like the fear of going broke. You know, so I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to say it is a good thing. Um, and it is like there is a solution where that doesn't even have to be a fear that you have if you if you um, use freelance copywriting or whatever else you may use. Um, the other one that I had is that people would judge me. I mean, that's such a human nature fear, right? I feel that a lot with anything when I put myself out there. I'm afraid of what people will think. I'm afraid of uh, what they'll say behind my back or like if they'll doubt me or or whatever. And so that one, I think I would just say, like, you cannot let that, like, run your life. Like, you cannot let that be the reason that you don't do something meaningful with your life or that you don't take chances. Like, because no matter what you do, I think we see this on social media where half the people like something and half don't. People will always have an opinion about what you do. And it's really none of your business what that is. What I've learned through entrepreneurship is... People are just in many t ways projecting their own doubts, fears, beliefs, patterns, histories onto you. So if someone is saying, oh my gosh, you can't do that, it's too risky, what that means is they feel like it'd be too risky for them. They're afraid. Maybe they know someone who tried it and failed. 
That doesn't mean you're going to fail. That just means that person knows someone who failed. And so now it's a red flag and risk to them. Um, if they say, you know, it's just like anything, like if you're not triggered by someone else doing something, that means that you don't have a lot of emotional charge there for yourself. It's only when you see someone who is out there and kind of bothers you that there's an unkind of healed or checked part of yourself in that. Right? Because someone can see Beyonce and say, she's empowering, she's amazing. And another person can see her and say, she's too sexy, like, you know, she um, needs to not do what she's doing. And it, it doesn't mean one is right or one is wrong. It just means that whoever is seeing it, that's their belief framework and their worldview. And so it shouldn't really bother Beyonce. Obviously, she can do whatever she wants to do through her world, worldview. Um, another thing that really, really helped me, if you haven't watched it, is Brene Brown's uh, TED Talk. And she just makes this comment about um, how, you know, when she gave her, her first talk, like everyone on the internet had an opinion on it. And it was kind of the first time, if I'm, hopefully I'm not butchering my memory of it, but like the first time she'd really experienced that. And so it was kind of jarring to her. And even as someone who works in psychology and shame research, like she knew she shouldn't be reading all the comments, but she just couldn't help it. And eventually she just came to this conclusion of like, if you like the cheapest seats are, are right in front where you can watch everything. But if you're not in the ring with me, like I'm not interested in your feedback. And that I think has really kind of helped me with entrepreneurship because there is so much that can be like challenging. There is so much of it where you feel like you're putting yourself out there. You're always reaching like your upper limits and you're trying to get through your money mindset and, and just your own life, like experiences and whatever's held you back before you're trying to work through it. And so um, to just have other people like who may not get it, who may not have been there, who may not have done it, who may not have put themselves out there the way you are or taken the risks that you have, you really can't you like have their feedback in your head, right? Because they don't know. Someone who's in the ring with you is never going to throw shade at you because they know how hard it is. They know you're both getting your butt kicked in different ways. They know that like it took a tremendous amount of energy and effort to put yourself out there and to begin with. And so I just think that that was kind of something where my fear of people would judge me I should just take that out as a fear because that's people will always judge me. They'll always judge you. It's not about that. It says more about them than us. Um, and two, unless they are people that you want to emulate and that you want advice from and you want to live a life like them, it, they're not in the ring with you. And so they're, they just can't see what you're up against. And so their opinion shouldn't, shouldn't uh, like make you feel small, shouldn't belittle you because you're doing things that they've never done yet. So like you should be proud of yourself. Um, so that's what I would say with that fear is like hard to know till you get in it. And, um, but you've done things in your life that like no one else, no one else has. Maybe you are a mother or a father. Maybe you have been the first in your generation to complete college. You just know that like those things can be really hard and you're not going to take advice from someone who's 22 years old and hasn't had any kids and is going to give you advice on being a mother. Like you're not going to take advice from someone who has a family of like, you know, college graduates. And so they're telling you, oh, it's easy. Like you are going to take advice from people who are in the same spot as you or just a little bit um, who inspire you a little bit ahead of you. And so like, don't even worry about the other comments, right? Like it's your journey um, and it's their projections more than anything when they say something about you. So that's number two. Number one, I was so afraid I would go broke. And number two, I was afraid people would judge me. And then this last one, um, I think kind of goes, they go together. I have two, but they're similar. And it's that I would fail and that I would have to go back to corporate America. Those are really tied in my mind because I just thought, I, I cannot go back if I get out. Like I was afraid it'd be embarrassing. So there's that people judgment one. Um, I, was, I was afraid I would fail. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to pull it off. And that would mean going back to corporate America. Um, and it wasn't like that was the scariest part to me. It was more just like knowing that I'd failed. And so that was a big one that I really worked through before I ever left corporate America um, that I was really afraid of a lot is just 
what if I fail? Like, what if I do have to go back? Um, and for that one, what I would say is it's kind of, again, like had I found freelance copywriting, I would have never had to have that fear because I could have perpetually sustained myself as long as I needed to in, you know, my coaching business, the one that I started right out of corporate America, um, that I have since pivoted to my content marketing agency. Cause I just found that as a much more lucrative, sustainable, freeing <laughs> way to live. Um, but I would just say that like, Another thing I realized about that fear is when I was still at the height of all my business debt, when I was still uh, struggling to get clients, when I was still taking longer than I thought it would uh, by many, many months and (laughs) even years over, um, I remember standing and just realizing like I'm in my worst fear happening. I'm in, it's worse than I thought it would be. Like I didn't even go through my savings. I went beyond that. But I'm still, I'm still happy. Like I'm still a good person. I'm still living a meaningful life. I'm tr- being able to travel like the world, like um, you know, it, like working from anywhere. So what my husband and I did this again another story for another day. But basically, put all of our rent money into being able to travel the world. And so instead of paying for rent, we paid for Airbnbs. And so um, you know, yes, I was like taking on debt to be able to um, sustain my business and to get by at the end. But like, even with that worst fear, um, I just, I was still okay. And I think almost something about coming to that brink of that and just realizing that you can be in the middle of the storm and you can be in your worst fear and you still survive is a really powerful just lesson for me. Um, And also that like what's failing? Like it's not super fun to be like, yeah, I couldn't pull off a business like right away. Um, and so I guess that's quote unquote failure, but it kind of, it led me to this next business. It led me to freelance copywriting where within one month I was able to replace my corporate income. Even if I'd been trying for years within a few more months, I was pay, able to pay off all my debts. I was able to double my corporate income. So like, yeah, that first business quote unquote failed in a sense, but like I still helped people. Like I still got out of corporate America. I still got to travel. I still got to find my way to um, a career that does really work for me and does pay me really well and does enable me to be generous and to have life experiences and enable others to have them too. And so I just think that failure is such a short-sighted term and it's something you can't be afraid of because it means that you are in the ring. It means that you're doing something meaningful with your life, that you're trying something. Um, Sarah Blakely, who is the founder of Spanx, love her. She used to have this, um, she mentioned once in an article that her family, her father at the dinner table every night would ask her, Sarah, like what's when way you, that you failed today? And what it taught her is don't feel, don't fear failure, fail not trying, fear regret, fear not fear wondering what if, fear playing small, um, fear not going for your dreams, fear wondering like what would have happened. Um, and so for me, that's really the way I live my life now is like if you ever get to the point where you feel like you're failing, it means you're really learning a lot and it means you're becoming an even different, better, like more aware, you know, person, like more expanded, like you've gone through something. And so and that's what I would say about failure is like it's to me now what I fear more than anything is the fear of regret. And it's not regret for doing something as much as the regret for not doing something and wondering what if. And so um, just I would encourage you to like go in the direction of your hopes more than your fears. I think that's a quote that someone said that I love. Um, but that's that's kind of become like a mantra of my life is like if the worst thing that happens to me is I quote unquote fail, but it leads me to something that does work. Um, It leads me to growth and to learning and adventure and stories like this I can tell about like years later um, with a little bit of perspective. Like that's pretty good trade-off, right? For not never having to live with regret or wonder what if or what could have happened or what could have been. So those are my fears, my biggest ones before leaving corporate America. If you are in this season of your life, like I feel for you. I know it comes with so many trepidations and so many doubts and, um, but it's exciting too. Like it's so exciting. I mean, the first day that I 
was officially free and I could work in my yoga pants. I could record videos. I could do blogs. Like I just remember being like, what do I even do today? I'm my own boss. And even though it took me a while with the path that I chose of trying coaching and building a brand new business from scratch, like a new idea, and probably could have been a lot, lot faster had I just jumped right into freelance writing, like that still what has been the greatest adventure like of my life like i i mean i i wish this upon everyone right even with the highs and the lows because you just get to become a different person through it um and that person is whoever you want to be and that life is whatever you want to lead and your schedule is your own and your day is your own and your income you finally feel free and secure because you know through something like freelance copywriting that you can make money at any point in your life. Like it, you can always get a client. You, could, you can charge premium rates so that your time is valuable and every hour you spend working, you're glad to spend because it enables you to do something else with your life and you're working for clients that you chose. So, I mean, what a journey it's been. Um, every stage new fears come up. I'd love to hear if you have some, let me know. Um, and make sure you check the description below if you are looking for more information on my journey and how I did this and how you can do freelance copywriting and strategy if it feels like the right path for you or you're at least curious about it. So I hope you have a wonderful day and that this calms your fears, but also just um, gives you some encouragement that even if you have them, like they're worth it. They're worth whatever is on the other side of them. And the only way out is through. Thank you so much for listening in. If you loved this episode, it would mean so much to me if you share it on Instagram stories and tag me so I can personally thank you for helping get the message out. I am so grateful to be on this journey with you. Until next time, talk to you soon.